Hi, I'm Jason Mears. I'm a senior systems engineer in the UK and also part of the VMware CTO Ambassador uh, program. Uh, today I'm going to talk you around an introduction to NSX, which is um, software defined networking or our, our network virtualization platform. So I'm just going to take you through 10 use cases, 10 very simple um, tricks that NSX can do, which tend to be interesting to, to talk to a customer on an initial meeting just to see if there's any interest in any of this, uh, perhaps before you get an NSX specialist involved. But here are um, things that you can take to a customer and ask them if it's useful because some of the concepts in NSX are quite difficult and quite technical and sometimes being able to talk about what benefit it gives me rather than how it works it can be can be more interesting. So what does NSX do? Um, it moves networking functions into software. You will still have swift physical switches and routers but some of those um, features or functionality that you had in them can be moved up into the hypervisor where it's a little bit closer to the virtual machine and it has some context um, and some kind of intelligence around what that virtual machine is actually doing or, or you know how the machine is behaving which machines it's trying to talk to. It cuts down on network provisioning time so there are things that NSX can do automatically that normally would have been manual steps in the in the physical world and might even have required several meetings or change advisory board meetings in order to get that change approved and signed off. So people often joke about the fact that they can build a machine in two or three minutes but it can take a week to two weeks to actually get it put on the network. So obviously you know that's kind of a less than ideal situation when when the virtual administrator can build a machine really quickly but it can take a matter of weeks sometimes even months just to get it actually on the network it lets you move workload seamlessly so it allows you to move virtual machines from different clusters or data centers or buildings or even cloud providers or countries um, without having to reconfigure settings. It's all policy driven so when you move a virtual machine the policy follows it and the settings follow it so things like um, security policies uh, uh, and things like um, network policies IP addresses, settings, ranges, all those kinds of things follow the machine round. So rather than move a machine and then have to get the network team to to follow it up and fix it, the, it just happens because it's software defined. Um, it enables something called micro segmentation. This is something we're going to talk about a little bit more, uh, but this is essentially the ability to to wrap an individual firewall around every single virtual machine and and stop certain types of attack dead in the tracks before they happen. So one of the one of the interesting things that this this been used for by some of our customers is to stop things like ransomware attacks or WannaCry attacks. So although it can't stop the first machine being infected, it can stop that ransomware or malware spreading across your network uh, un, unrestricted. And it also integrates with third party products. So you'll find that lots of antivirus vendors are plugging straight into um, NSX. Uh, mal malware tools, um, firewall tools, uh, data loss prevention tools, but lots of security tools actually can perform better if they plug in and integrate with NSX. So it becomes um, a, a nice place for all these additional tools and services to be plugged in to build on top of the functionality that NSX already gives you. So I'm going to, here are the, the 10. Um, use cases that, I, that I'm going to talk to you about. I first got these from a whiteboard done by a guy in the UK called um, Mike Armstrong. Um, he's one of the NSX SEs and what I decided to do was create a presentation on it so that the salespeople could also see some of these use cases. So I'm going to break them into three categories. So the first one is data center mobility which touches these here. Some of them also uh, fall into the automation category as well and some of them end up in the security category but essentially I'm going to talk to you about 10 use cases or capabilities and how they fit into mobility, automation and security. So the first one I'm going to talk about is this one here, decouple physical hardware. It would help if I went forward rather than backward. So um, what you'll see in these slides is there's generally a red bit of text and a green bit of text and it's as simple as what is it on the, the red bit and why do I care in the green bit? So what is it? It's something that allows you to be hardware agnostic. What, and then the green bit, why do I care? Because now you can just buy the hardware you need based on the number of ports 
and the speed that you require. And NSX can provide a consistent set of features and functionalities across all of those devices. So think about what vSphere did for your servers. You no longer had to buy an identical server from an identical vendor with an identical RAID controller or a network card. Once you abstract those the, that kind the hardware from underneath and deliver a consistent experience, it no longer doesn't matter which um, switch vendor or provider you use. We are using it as a what we call an underlay network. It's the plumbing underneath all of this, but the actual core components or core services are being provided by NSX. So, I'll give you an example of that. If you have vendor A, who is your legacy equipment. You have vendor B, which is your current equipment, and you might even move to a new vendor in future. Typically, those products wouldn't work together with each other and wouldn't be able to be managed and, and configured in a unified way. What NSX does is it takes those for the connectivity and the plumbing part of the uh, switch or router, and it paints a thin layer of NSX over the top, which now gives you a uniform and consistent back now gives you a uniform and consistent way of doing networking across virtual machines without caring too much about what make or model of hardware is underneath so again it, it just abstracts the hardware from underneath as long as you have a switch that can switch and a router that can route and as long as they can handle slightly larger packets or blocks of information something called jumbo frames uh, you're good to go with NSX just to give you some context on jumbo frames, I, w I would say that most hardware built in the last eight to ten years has been able to support jumbo frames. Certainly, all new hardware is able to cope with it. So, the the requirements of switching, routing, and jumbo frames is not a particularly um, you know onerous one. So, the next thing that it could do: business continuity and disaster recovery. This is the ability to take networks in different buildings or data centers and make them look like they are the same network or as if all the equipment is plugged into the same room or the same switch. And it allows you to move servers, applications, and services between data centers and cloud providers with no need to modify or reconfigure any network settings. So, what is it? the ability to move machines around any any way you want to. Why do I care? Because you can stop, start, move, migrate or vMotion machines across data centers without caring which network they're on. Um, it's as if they're all plugged into the same switch. The other part of it is disaster recovery or disaster avoidance is incredibly simple when either the original copy or a backup copy of a VM can be turned on or powered up instantly anywhere with no reconfiguration whatsoever. So just to give you some context on that, if I build, if I have a virtual machine here in one data center and another one here, if this one fails, I can just turn on this one here and it will work straight away without any reconfiguration of any settings or, or network, um, which which could have taken days or weeks in, in, in previous times or with, um, you know, with, with physical hardware. Um, an example of that, if I have site one here, site two, site three, and maybe a cloud provider, they traditionally have their own network settings and network ranges. If we paint this thin layer of NSX over the top to give us this abstraction layer and this uniformity across all the sites, that allows us to treat all uh, resources of compute, storage, and networking across multiple sites as if they were on the same physical network. So all of these can talk to each other um, naturally or normally uninhibited um, because NSX has just made it look like they're all on the same physical network even though physically and logically they're in different data centers which may be in different countries, different cities or you know, uh, maybe some of them are cloud providers um, rather than actual your own data centers. So it's that ability to, to flatten out your network in a way that the server administrators love but in a way that the network administrators are happy with because there are other ways of stretching a network but most of those introduce lots of problems and complications or cause the performance of the network to suffer greatly so this is a way of creating a flat network that the server administrators like but in a way that doesn't break it for the network administrators so multi-tenancy I've talked about this in another video but um, this is the ability to run 
multiple tenants or multiple companies, business units, customers, whatever you want to call them, on the same physical hardware, but with complete isolation from each other. And when I say complete isolation, they can, each individual customer or uh, organization can actually have identical IP addresses and VLANs without conflicting with each other, something that would be physically impossible in, in the normal world. So, you know, that's what it does. It allows you to run um, duplicates or overlapping environments as if they're completely isolated. Um, why do I care about that? Well, if you can run multiple co identical copies of an application, service, or learning environment, um, if you can spin something up lots of times without it conflicting, in in some cases you can you can resell that service or or provide that service to more people without them uh, conflicting with each other. So in some cases, some of my customers have used this to actually become a profit center. So one example would be one of my customers has got some online learning which they've spun up an identical environment for for multiple customers and charged them all as if they've got their own um, completely isolated copy of it but they're doing this on a, on, a, on a common set of hardware so example of that would be we've got a single on-premise or cloud data center we paint this thin layer of uh, NSX over the top to give us this abstraction and I can now run multiple identical environments or multiple environments for different customers on the same physical hardware or same equipment without them conflicting with each other. So particularly useful for service providers or environments where different departments would have got their own budgets and bought their own equipment and treated them like silos. So moving on from multi-tenancy, um, NSX also helps you to speed up provisioning new VMs because if you can build a VM and do the network settings, the VLAN settings, securities, firewalls, and load balancers as a single process, all these separate stages that would have involved separate people can be done as one thing. We call it a blueprint, but a blueprint basically tells you, tells us, here are all the components and things that go into creating an application or a service, do them all at once. And the other part of it is, is once a blueprint has been tested and validated, because it does the same thing the same way every time, you don't necessarily need to go to change control every time you build something with a blueprint because it's going to be consistent and you've already approved what it's going to do. So at the bottom I've got some vSphere hosts that are each running NSX down the bottom. We've got this um, thin layer of NSX over the top which is, which is abstracting anything and providing this common uh, environment. And for every virtual machine I'm going to build the virtual machine, but I want policies attached to it, and I want a firewall attached to it. And every time I build a virtual machine, I can do all of those processes automatically. So I can apply a security policy. I can build things like firewalls and load balancers into it in one step. So just building the machine does all those other things, which could have been different departments, um, different processes, and it may have happened over a couple of days or weeks. But now everything is all done as a single kind of thing rather than um, pass the parcel where you move the virtual machine and all the settings to the to the next team in the link. So once you can do that, once you can manage individual VMs and use things called blueprints, because blueprints can are not only for network settings, they can they can incorporate things like storage policies, network policies, security policies, compliance policies. The thing about blueprints is they minimize manual effort, um, which is good but more importantly, they minimize human error. When you do something consistently through a blue blueprint, it means that no matter who clicks on the blueprint or runs the blueprint, you get a machine built exactly the same way every single time, no matter who does it. So that human error and the inconsistencies from human error is, is eliminated. So again, same example, uh, NSX running, thin layer of NSX providing abstraction. Uh, I've got all those machines there, but now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change something in the policy. And what you'll see is that I change something in the policy and it automatically ripples across all these VMs. So when I change the policy, the policy is updated across all of them rather than it be a manual thing on every single VM. Next thing I'm going to show you is rapid application deployment. So it, this allows a, a, an end user or a customer or an administrator to move from building individual virtual machines and building com and configuring individual firewalls and load balancers and all the associated services with it that we're actually going to wrap the whole environment up. So the, the example I'm going to give is something like uh, a web server stack which might have a database 
set of database servers, it might have some application servers and it might have some web servers and there might be firewalls and load balancers plugged in between them. So what I want to do is, is describe the whole environment, not just the component parts. Now if I can describe how to build the whole environment, I can then put that into a self-service facility or vending machine something a little bit like Virialize Automation. So if I know how to build a whole environment with just one click, not only can the IT department use that, but customers, end users, students, staff, anybody else can also use it. So I'll show you an example of that. Again, vSphere host at the bottom, a layer of NSX abstracting everything. I've got a database server, which I would traditionally build by hand. I've got two application servers I would traditionally build by hand. I've got three web servers that I would build by hand. I need to firewall off the database servers from the app servers, I need to firewall the web servers from the app servers, and then I might want to put a load balancer in front so that people can hit any of the web servers to, to use this service or this um, functionality. This blueprint allows me to wrap it up so now I have a single thing that contains instructions on how to build all those components in an instant. So now I've got that blueprint, I can build a repeatable environment in a consistent manner and I can do it quickly and now it doesn't even have to be the IT department that do it, a user could request this environment if they have the necessarily uh, permissions and authority to do so. But this is about building the entire service automatically, not just individual components by hand. So let's take this rapid application deployment a step further. If I can build a whole environment automatically, maybe I could do it for test, dev and production. So maybe I could spin up a copy of my live environment to test some patches or updates or to try a new piece of code. But this, if I can spin up identical environments quickly in complete isolation, I can do all of my testing and maintenance. I can, I can, I can run things as if it's in my live environment whilst it actually being completely safe and isolated. So as it says at the bottom, find out if you've got a bad patch or an incompatible version or bad code before you deploy it in the live environment because if it breaks, it breaks the test environment or the development environment, not the production one. So again, also great for enabling DevOps where you might want to give every single programmer or developer their own completely separate isolated version of the live environment for, for testing and development. I'll show you an example of that. So again, um, individual vSphere hosts, layer of NSX abstracting and providing common set of services. And I spin up my dev environment, I spin up my test environment, and I spin up my production environment. And all of these are built automatically from the same set of blueprints, but I have a common set of management tools and monitoring and all the other things that go with them. So I've got one team with complete visibility across all these environments which all are built from the same core components, they all look identical, but one's my real production environment, one is for development, and one's for testing my development. So I can build things here, I can then throw it into there to test it, and if I test it okay, I can throw it into there to make it live and go into production. So I can do things called continuous integration, continuous deployment, a, a very buzzwordy thing from the DevOps team, but this is the way that people build applications. They, they develop them, they test them, they put them into production. If you don't have dev and test, what you end up doing is deploying code and deploying applications live in the production environment and you risk breaking it. The alternative to this is you have to buy three completely separate sets of infrastructure and equipment in order to keep them separate. Um, NSX gives the ability to, to, to run development, test and production on the same hardware without them trampling on each other or interfering with each other and in a way that you know it is exactly identical. It's not like it, it's exactly like it. So another interesting thing that NSX can do is automated security response. So quite a bold statement up there in the red but NSX can provide an automated security response much faster than any human or manual process could ever do even on thousands of VMs at once because it's policy driven and software defined so what I mean by that is let's say you have a virus or a malware attack at 3 a.m. in the morning when nobody's at work um, even if they were at work, there's only so many manual clicks and manual re remediation that, a, that an IT person can do. If this is automated and policy driven and software defined, NSX can, can perform actions 
on uh, on the networking and security of a virtual machine automatically across thousands of virtual machines regardless of the IT department actually being aware of it or even being in the office so I'm going to give you an example of uh, a virus or a piece of malware that attacks a virtual machine and I'm going to talk about the integration with antivirus and how the integration with the antivirus product in NSX can start to take these machines off the network so we have an example here where I have a virtual machine there that's got a virus and the antivirus product will attach something to that virtual machine called a tag and that tag says this machine has a virus now this machine is currently using a standard security policy and it, to all intents and purposes it's on a standard VLAN it can talk to um, all the machines it can normally talk to so we've got a virus on it and the antivirus product has just tagged it. The next thing that happens is NSX notices that tag that's attached to that machine and it decides because it's got a virus we better apply a more restrictive security policy. So what we need to do now is restrict the machines that that can talk to and we're probably going to restrict it to only being able to talk to the antivirus server or the quarantine server. So there's a slight oversimplification next but what that is the equivalent of doing is moving it onto another network which is the antivirus network. So it's slightly more complicated than this but all you need to know is when that virus is found we change the security policy and, and make it so that the only thing it can talk to is the other antivirus servers not any of the other servers or desktops or virtual machines so where it's the equivalent of pulling the network cable out and plugging it into a different network but all done through uh, policies and software defined so now that that machine can only talk to the antivirus server or the quarantine server it can't affect any more machines on the same network or the same VLAN and it can only talk to the antivirus server so once that antivirus is either once that virus is either quarantined or cleaned up, the antivirus will remove the tag that we had before, and it will take it off. So now this machine isn't tagged as having a virus. It's still currently on the antivirus policy and the antivirus VLAN. But as soon as NSX notices that, that tag has been removed, it will put it back on the standard security policy and the standard network, so it can talk to all the services again. So essentially, what we've done maybe at 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. in the morning, is detect a virus, take it off the network, allow it to be remediated or quarantined by the antivirus server, then put it back on the network. So this example was just of one virtual machine, but this could be done automatically for thousands of machines without any intervention from an IT person or an administrator. So this is an automated security response. We can detect... Um, um, a problem or an incident on a machine we can isolate it we can quarantine it and if we can fix it we're then able to reinstate it again and put it back on the network so it's an automated security response this is just one example of what we can do with tags another thing that some of my customers do is they have a tag which is for the build network so if you attach a tag to a virtual machine that says this is currently going through the build process it puts it on one particular network and it allow it to talk to a certain set of build machines or certain set of resources on a particular network and once it's built you take the build network tag off and it goes automatically onto a production network where it gets a different security policy and can now talk to a different set of servers so again all we're really doing is we're saying NSX can integrate with the other third party tools and tags and you can create some quite interesting or quite advanced capabilities that don't require any human intervention so one of the one of the things that you hear people talk around um, more, more than anything else around NSX is micro segmentation, which is the ability to wrap a firewall around every single VM and stop it talking to its neighbours or any other services unless you have a specific policy that allows it. So, just as an example, if you have machines on the same VLAN or virtual LAN, it's as if they're all talking in the same corridor or the same street, um, and a firewall cannot stop um, a traditional firewall cannot stop people talking in the same street the only thing it can do is it can intercept them as they you know go to another part of the network you know kind of going through um through a roundabout or another kind of junction but generally machines on the same street or the same vlan 
have got unfettered access to each other. They can talk to each other without any security or any security policies affecting them. NSX changes that by putting a software firewall around every single VM so there are security policies around what a VM can send out and what it can accept so it can nip um, these kind of things in the bud where you can, you can stop a virus or a piece of malware from infecting its neighbours before it ever gets chance to um, you know kind of propagate across the network. An interesting part about it is it can't be stopped, disabled or modified by the end user. So if you take the Windows built-in firewall for example, lots of viruses on a machine will disable the Windows firewall. Some users or even administrators will disable the Windows firewall. It's quite common for a, a network administrator or a server administrator to um, disable the local operating system firewall when things don't work just to see if that's the problem and then not turn it back on again. Um, another way of doing this is with a physical firewall but the, the problem with the physical firewall is it's got an IP address and an attack surface um, so you can you can always attack a physical firewall because you can get to it for want of a, a, better, a better explanation. Because micro segmentation and the software firewall that VMware provide is in the hypervisor itself not a physical appliance there isn't a way for an attacker to get to the firewall or for the operating system to get to the firewall so it, it's it's close enough to have context but it's far away to have isolation so we've got the best of both worlds we can we can see what's going on because we're close but we're not so close that an attacker or a user can disable us um, because it's got access to us. So I'll show you an example of that next. Again, vSphere host at the bottom, NSX layer across there abstracting everything and providing a common set of features. So for every virtual machine we've got, we can we can enable micro segmentation and each one will instantly um, gain a firewall or firewall protection around it. Um, just in, a, in an end user computing or a VDI environment this single step alone would be enough to stop ransomware or malware or viruses spreading across all the machines in your environment in a single step. So we have customers who had this kind of solution deployed when WannaCry hit and although the first machine got hit and infected the WannaCry or the malware or the virus was not able to propagate across the network because every machine had a software firewall or a hypervisor firewall attached to it that didn't require uh, the traffic going out to a physical firewall or router first so this is that example I said before where all the machines are effectively sat in the same street or the same corridor where a, where a physical firewall can't really help them because it's, the traffic's not going through the firewall where a, whereas a VMware hypervisor firewall or micro segmentation can protect them exactly as they are. So micro segmentation definitely one of the things you're going to talk about most with your customers about NSX. So back to the summary these are the things we talked about we talked about data center mobility automation and security so just as an example here we talked about an automated security response being able to detect a virus take it off the network fix it and then put it back on that's why that fits in automation and security we improve the security of the virtual machine by automating some task so as I said here are 10 common use cases you can talk to with your customers the other thing I'm going to show you next is a slide which talks about what capabilities are in different versions of NSX so these are all the things that you get in NSX standard all of those things down there here are the things that you additionally get with advanced so advanced contains everything in standard plus these and for enterprise you get everything in standard everything in advanced plus these as well so I'll just pause on that screen for a second but this is essentially what you get with each version of, of NSX so again I tend to have this in in a, in a more advanced deck but it's a question that comes up quite a lot which is if I need feature XYZ such as distributed firewall which version do I need in order to do that if I want the ability to run uh, multi-site NSX and run it across multiple vCenters maybe I need enterprise if I only need layer 2 over layer 3, maybe I just need standard. But again, that's just a, a simple overview of which features are in which versions. So that's the end of my NSX 101 or NSX introduction. Um, as I said before, I'm Jason Mears. I'm a senior systems engineer and a CTO ambassador based out of the UK. Um, thank you very much for your time.